face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up guys and of course welcome back to a new series section on my channel called League vs Tears. And in this series, we're going to, of course, go over Pokemons that are doing different in leagues in contrast to its hero counterparts. It should also be said that this is loosely based on a person who is named either Raider or Kelly, who did an viability ranking on league Pokemons. And we're going to actually utilize that league concept and, of course, ranking in mind. And I should also say that since this is, of course, a first episode, that depending on how well this one is doing... I may not actually continue, but I really want to, of course, go through with this because I actually like comparing Pokemon that are better or worse in leagues and just talk about their issues they could be facing or perks that they're not facing in leagues. And what I was going to say that actually, of course, started my first episode with a Pokemon that are in PU in Eurasia 6 being, of course, Floatzil. Now, Floatzil is definitely famous for being a Pokemon that are a bit of a glass cannon. But also, it's not fitting most team due to its archetype being war type, which is just as a standard typing, not too shabby. It resists a lot of things and weak to very few things. Resists, of course, like the fire, ice, steel, and water, while weak to, of course, electric and grass. Uh, the thing that is kind of a bad thing with Flozil is that the archetype of this Pokemon is not a defensive Pokemon. It's a very, very straight offensive Pokemon with, of course, 85 base HP, which is definitely a bit of a higher, actually, usual. It's attacks that definitely peak 105, which is really good. Then we're going to, of course, its defense is 55, and of course, special defense is 50. So definitely showcasing how fragile this Pokemon is. Though, with that high HP set, it just kind of boils down to a bit of a below average uh, overall stamina. But of course, special attack 85, not too shabby, and the speed here is definitely up to 115. Which, of course, is a very, very strong speed here, mainly because it actually outspeeds even your everyday electric types of... As a standalone Pokemon, Floatzil does even outstand, of course, and outspeeds the Pokemon that does naturally usually shake it or actually can hit one kill with it. Definitely usually get a one hit in before it actually falls. So it's a very, very strong thing. Its ability here, Swift Swim, Water Wheel, both abilities kind of lack lustering. Swift Swim definitely over redundant, clearly, because they're already super, super high, of course, speeds here. But Water Wheel, of course, avoiding burn, of course, avoiding Skull Burns. Is a very very strong ability and does help it out somewhat because it means it can stay offensive no matter what happening of course around it. Now, Float Seal's move pool is one of those really really interesting one because it doesn't get a diverse move pool, but it sure as hell is one interesting one. It definitely is relevant enough to be of course relevant to actually mention. It does get of course dual priority and of course quick attack and Oka Jets. Other than that, it does also get Pursuit, so you actually lock in Pokemon naturally. And of course, it does get its, of course, Waterfall Stab and Hydro Pokemon, usually its special side. Clear, trust me though, its special side are definitely just as intimidated as its, of course, physical move pool. It also gets Bulk Up, which of course can solve any possible defensive issues it can face. Consider, of course, with its already high attacks. Boost those stats, pretty darn cool, because it doesn't need to, of course, raise its speed anyway. It does get, of course, the likes of Surf, Ice Beam, Focus Blast, and of course we have Brick Break, Rock Tomb on the physical side with Crunch. And other than that, it does have a few tutor moves that definitely are interesting. Most being, of course, the likes of Power Punch, Ice Punch, Ice Wind, Iron Tail, Low Kick, and of course Focus Punch, you want to utilize that, of course, and your Natural Gift. So while its move pool is not too diverse, it does learn, like I stated here, a lot of relevant things, and most of these things definitely work more in a league concept than it does in, of course, tier, because, of course, it conceptualized of course, ever since. So what do Smogon, as of course, community think about Floatzil? Well, they aren't given too much downside to Floatzil. It's precise in PU in Generation 6, and could very well do the same in, of course, Generation 7. Floatzil is as actually represented here as a very, very good Pokemon in general. Excellent speed tier, a lot of attacks going on, and it does, of course, outspeed relevant threats, as of course, Tauros and Archeops and Pyroar. Uh, it has a decent enough move pool that allows it to hit most tiers hard. Floatzil's ability are useful in some cases, as, of course, Swissum does allow to outspace an Oko, Cabotips, and Omas are under rain, while Water Wheel of uh, used to avoid getting burned, Lice Skull, and Will O Wisp. Although its strong coverage move mostly makes up for it, Flosis special attack isn't very high, leaving the struggling to pressure Pokemon like Lantern, Pokemon immune to water, and without relying on, of course, the likes of Focus Blast. 
Floats is also quite frail, leaving a vulnerability of course would be easily revenge killed by Pokemon, such as of course Kangas Gun, Hitmarchant Chip 3, and lastly Floats will face competition from other warrior types such as of course Samurai and Lord of Kobo, as they are bulkier and have better move pool. So that seems to be the only downside here is that it does kinda lack of course the bulk that is needed for a war type. Usually there is an archetype to war types which are general that they need to of course be I can't say it's enough bulkier due to its precise and of course resistances. And of course as stated Floatzel is a glass cannon which means that it's definitely relying on the of course opposing team to be able to of course triumph and there is where of course we have the edge in leagues. Because of course in the small tiers where you face against a rod of 50 plus Pokemons, there are only so many sets that will work with Float Seal that will be relevant, mostly of course for your life orb with either a physical or defensive or even special move pool. Usually you go to physical one with bulk up, which works rather decently. You can also go with of course a bandit set. But there's where it all ends. When it goes of course league concept, things becomes a lot different actually. Because due to its rather niche move pool to get away with all the strong speed here, you can like to choose to of course not be speedy. You can definitely utilize yourself to be of course an adamant set and just outspeed the likes of 95 base speed and that will be just fine depending on what you're facing. Floats can be much much more specific and much much more offensively orientated than other speed tiered Pokemon. And being of course that have a stab border type which actually offensively is rather good, Flossy can never triumph rather naturally. It's definitely a decent revenge kill and due to Pursuit can lock of course Pokemon in that are of course in a low HP, making Flossy one of those Pokemon that are pretty much impossible to prep for. Yes, it does last the defensive and usually of course the archetype of war type does consider that you should be defensive with recovery, but if you want a Pokemon that of course can be offensively and be an like, extremely good revenge kill, Flossy will suit that role just fine. And it's not like you actually are in a disadvantage by having two or more warrior types in your team due to, of course, its resistances and weaknesses in mind. So with all these things considered, while it is actually lackluster in, in of course, the smoke and tears, it's actually rather decent in the leagues. Dude, like I said here, the nation speed tier and offensive stats here, it does kind of push the bonus a little bit. It's definitely not an S or A rank, but I definitely put it in a B minus. It is a Pokemon that does kind of revenge kill naturally, and due to, of course, pursuit of being able to lock in Pokemon, this thing triumphs rather naturally. Yes, it's definitely sprayed, but also it does have a high HP stats, so it becomes somewhat of a below average defensive Pokemon, and that definitely could be capable of lies himself of switching in. Should be also said that this Pokemon, due to that high HP, that can actually utilize the likes of Left Orbits rather naturally. So, I'll definitely think this Pokemon is one of the strongest ones that I'm going to introduce in this concept. Because this is one of those Pokemon that are below, below, below in the smoke and tears because of what Steve competition has to deal with. But when you can be specific, Flow still does kind of stand tall because this Pokemon hurts hard. And with the right environment and of course with the right team synergy, this thing works rather naturally. And definitely one of the strongest competition, I would say, for a low ranking Pokemon in a league format. So, of course, with this set, what do you guys think about Float Seal and, of course, in League Concept? Do you have any experience with this Pokemon? Do, of course, tell. And other than that, of course, I have to say, do you guys enjoy this, of course, concept and series? This is definitely something I think about doing, but only if you guys want to, of course, see it. If not, then, you know, I'll, I'll run about. I'll, I'll, I'll sell for, of course, just one episode. But if you guys want to see more of these, make sure to write it down below. And also, what Pokemon do you want to see, if so? And other than that, of course, thank you as always, of course, for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll see you, of course, next time with, of course, another video. Until then, of course, take care.